Chris here with a super tiny compact portable laser projector from a company called Wemax. It is their Go Advanced 300. Now it may be small, but it's got a lot of features packed into it. So it has a battery built within it that can run for up to one and a half hours. It's using laser technology, projection technology that is from LADP. And it does have a maximum of 600 ANSI lumens, which is brighter than some of the competition out there. It has a four watt speaker built into it and some really handy features too. So it does have auto keystone correction, auto focus, and a time of flight camera that can detect objects that are in the way, resize the image. But also more importantly, especially if you're a parent like I am, if a child walks in front of it or anyone walks in front of it, it can detect that and lower the brightness of the projection there to stop people from damaging their eyes. Now I'll be putting it through its paces. I'll also connect up a PlayStation 5 to the HDMI input, see how it handles games, and let you know all the pros and cons here of the Wemax Go Advanced. Then included inside the box, obviously we've got our projector. And look at how small this is. It is tiny, yet 1080p and up to 600 lumens, ANSI lumens, the maximum brightness out of it. So the power supply here, very small too, which is great to see. Now this is a type C power supply and it's 65 watts. Now it does support power delivery, so you can use another power supply. If you've got a type C power supply that supports up to 65 watts power delivery, it will also work and then our remote, that is all we get with it. So the remote doesn't come with any batteries. I'll just show you quickly that you do need to supply two AAA batteries. Now the height of it, just wanted to measure this out of curiosity. You can see it's approximately just over two and a half centimeters the height. So really small, really portable, easy enough to travel with this and about 22 centimeters there, the length of it. That is excellent. It is the smallest portable 1080p projector that I have ever reviewed. They're normally quite large, quite tall. So if you slide this here, this is a cover that goes over where the lens is. You slide that back, there is actually a little camera right here. So that's used for the object detection. So it can detect when an object's in the way, size down the image, and it does have a auto keystone feature too, which is really handy to have. So you don't have to manually keep going through that. Of course, it's good to have on a portable projector because you're gonna be moving it around. That's the idea. So there are some sensors right here. That is, of course, the lens there for the laser projector. So it is using an LAPD laser in this, their laser technology, which is good to see. And that is a proper 600 ANSI lumens. It's not faked. So the runtime of this model here, it can go for up to one and a half hours. That's the 1080p there, which is really good. And I'll just flip it around and show you what we have on the back here for the ports. So there is an HDMI input here, USB and 3.5 millimeter audio out, and then the type C in there, which is, as I mentioned before, does support power delivery for charging it. On the right side, there is a grill here. So some air is gonna be coming through this and it's actually blown out the front, the little fan that's inside it. And so far testing it out, the fan noise is excellent. I'll give you a sample in this in-depth review later on of what you can expect out of it, but it's quieter than other portable projectors I have reviewed. There is a loudspeaker inside this. So there are four watt loudspeakers. On the left, there is nothing, just three vents there at the bottom. Along the top, we've got a status LED and it does state their beam into the future. So this material they have used here, this is a alloy with a matte paint job to it. It tends to pick up a few little fingerprints, but overall it's not too bad. The underside, there are four little rubber feet that it does sit on. And there is this little stand here so you can prop it up and give yourself maybe a better angle at projecting if you're gonna be placing this down on a table. So what is missing on the underside of it is a little mount point for mounting this on a tripod. Now you can actually get a base for this, like a stand that you can then mount it on a tripod, but that's an optional extra. When you power up the Wemax Go, this is the first menu you're greeted with. So it is their own little operating system here, the menu. So we have our launcher where you can go ahead and launch various different applications. So you see I've got Firefox there, YouTube. You can get some apps and install them. But what I've discovered that this does not have a wide vine level one cert. So if you install Netflix on this, it's only going to be standard definition. That goes for Amazon Prime TV and others, unfortunately, 
but we do have an HDMI input, which I'll be testing out later on with actual full HD content with it. So we've got our user manual, focus. I'll just quickly show you that because this is how it does actually do its autofocus with the camera. You see that it's out of focus and then it just gets it completely spot on. You can fine tune that, but I find that the way they do focus it, it seems to be really perfect for me and, and I've had no issues with that. You've got your keystone correction. So this is done automatically. You can do your own little fine tuning and adjustments, but I'm gonna leave it as is here because it's already done that for me and I find it's good. Now, if you do have anything in the way, imagine you've got a bit of a plant in the corner, it will actually size down the screen to fit that in. Right now, what you're looking at is approximately about 110 inches or so that it is projecting. And I'll get onto the, the quality of the image soon. We've got feedback there, shut down down the bottom. We've got Bluetooth speaker, our input, so you can swap over then to the HDMI in. Cast projection, projection, I'll just go into that. So we've got Android devices, Apple, and then applications. So mirror cast, iOS projection, and a file manager and our settings. So I'll just run over this very quickly. You can see we've got network settings, system. So they do have some updates coming. And in August, we should be able to get with this an Android TV update that it will be running. Energy saving, security, about uh, sound. Very, very standard there. The settings we do have present for our image here, we've got office mode, which is the brightest one. Then there's eco, you can see it just dulls that screen down to save on the lamp in there. And of course your eyesight, but also battery too. If you're running on the battery, it'll be up to about an hour and a half and movie mode. But I'm gonna keep it on office, that's the brightest and that's the, the one I prefer the colors of. So the image parameters there, we've got standard, movie, child mode, showy mode, sport, eye care, and then custom, you can go and tweak all of those settings in there yourself. And the projection method, you can change all of that too as well. You've got screen shift, screen focus down there. I just use the auto focus. Obstacle avoidance, you can have that on as I mentioned and showed before. And the auto screen align, auto calibration, and four point keystone correction and automatic vertical, vertical correction too. So as soon as it detects that you've moved it or you've placed it somewhere, it's gonna set itself up by itself. So I won't go really into any more of that because it's all pretty much self-explanatory there. So it's a basic menu system, but pretty much all you'd want with this. Let's take a look now at the file manager. It is now showing all of the items that are in that USB pen drive that I've plugged into it. So I have just some images, image browser. This is pretty straightforward here. So you can go through and look at all your different images. The speed of it seems to be okay, that's just fine. But what I do want to look at is video playback. So I'm gonna play a couple of files that are quite demanding. Well, the first one I will check out, this is a 1080p clip here, which is HEVC 10-bit jellyfish sample file. All right, a couple of stutters there in the beginning, but even Windows mini PCs do that and it's playing that okay, that's fine. I'll just go back and we'll take a look now at a 4K one. Now this is very demanding, 140 megabits per second. I don't expect it to be able to play this, to decode it, fine. Oh, it can, all right. So of course it scaled it down and oh, it's dropping just a few frames there. So that's not perfect playback there from it. And what about a 4K 60 file? This is stepping it up, this should probably be a little bit too demanding. All right, I can see that that one. That's fine too. It's able to play it without dropping any frames there. And that is, of course, projecting out at 1080p 60 frames per second. Onto the image quality now. So this is via YouTube. I have it set to just 1080p, which is, of course, all it can project out. Now, the blacks, I wanted to comment on them, that the blacks are looking quite good. I'm not seeing noise. That grain that you sometimes get with some of the projectors I have tested out now that it's loading in, that is not a pure black, it's looking a little gray there, but there's no noise to it. For a 1080p image from a portable projector here with the maximum brightness of 600 ANSI lumens, this is looking fairly good. Now, it is, of course, with a dark room right now. So what I'm projecting is the best possible image quality. And to me, I, I think this is perfectly acceptable that everyone's gonna be happy for 1080p. It's looking good. Now, when you look at it closer, you can see like the individual little tiny squares, like the pixels. But from the distance I'm standing, which is approximately about uh, 15, 10 meters away from it, it's looking good. But what I'll do now is turn on some ambient lighting and we'll take a look at it. 
Now with one of the shades open, so a bit of ambient light coming in, I could open up all the rest of the shades. I probably would struggle then to see it. You can see it's not looking as good. So this projector, you definitely want to be watching the content in a completely pitch black room or as dark as possible. So with some ambient light on here at the moment, it's still viewable. The experience is still fine, but of course it doesn't look as good now. And the 600 ANSI lumens is struggling a little bit under these conditions. Finally, to test out that HDMI input, I do have my PlayStation 5 connected up to it, and this title here is Dirt 5. Now, as soon as I move there to, for example, the left or the right, I'm not noticing any terrible latency issues, so the input lag seems to be fine, and I can play this game without any issues. And it really does look good, even though it's 1080p 60, this, of course, projected at an approximate 110 inches is super immersive. What about the fan noise then? All of these projectors, of course, are actively cooled. They have little fans in there to keep the components cool that it doesn't overheat. But how loud is it? Well, I can tell you now that it's great. It's very quiet. It's a constant fan noise. You barely even hear it. If you're using the speakers, you won't hear it. Here's a sample of what the fan sounds like, just to give you an idea. Then the speakers, so it's four watts, and the volume is fine actually. I think it's acceptable for a portable projector, but they are definitely flat. They are lacking some bass. So here is a sample of what the speakers sound like at 100% volume. All right, so to quickly recap here, what are the things I like about the WiMAX Go Advanced? Well, it's the size. This is the smallest yet that I have covered, reviewed for portable projectors. It's crazy thin for a projector, and you can easily place this in a bag. The other thing I like about it is that when you power it on, you put it down, you point it at a wall anywhere, it will then automatically set up the image for you. So that is automatic focus. It will do the keystone correction to get the image looking straight. That is a very handy feature. You don't have to go with the remote then to manually set the focus, to go through the menus, to then set up and tweak the keystone there. But of course you can do that if you want to, but it's really fast to set up. The image quality I think is good for a portable projector like this, considering the size of it. It is 600 ANSI lumens maximum brightness. The blacks look good, colors are fine, and overall the image quality, if you're in a, a dimly lit room, is going to be great. Now, it's 600 ANSI lumens. It's not a fake 600 ANSI lumens, which is good, but if you have some ambient lights around, a bit of sunlight coming through, you are going to struggle a little bit to see it, which is normal. It has a built-in speaker, but it's not amazing. So this is what I get onto now, the cons of it. It's quite flat, but hey, it's, it's better than not having any speaker at all. You've got a 3.5 millimeter audio out to option or Bluetooth pairing. The other is the actual UI. Now the UI has some limitations. You can install Netflix on it, uh, but the problem is it is only in standard definition. That goes for other streaming services. Why? because the DRM cert it has is a Widevine level three cert. It's not Widevine level one, unfortunately. Now they have told me, WiMAX, that this will be getting Android TV in August, so I'm crossing my fingers. They do apply and get that Widevine level one cert. It's gonna be an additional cost for them, but it will allow us then to stream up to the full maximum 1080p to get the best image quality possible. So that's the big con for me with a unit like this. Other than that, it, it's a fantastic little unit and the fan noise and the thermals also really good. You barely hear the fan in it and it remains at the same constant RPM. It's not going to be bothering you. If you're listening to something and using the actual speaker on it, then you really don't hear it at all. And it seemed to be just fine for also console gaming. If you wanna use this, maybe going on a trip away somewhere, or you wanna set it up in your room quickly and plug it into a console, you can do it. And I didn't notice any issues at all with the input lag there. So there we go, that is the WiMAX Go Advanced 300. Thank you so much for watching this review.